This problem statement says the rectangular plate was deformed into a parallelogram as shown here. Determine the shear strain at corners A and B. So one thing to keep in mind is the, the shear strain essentially is the change in angle. We're asked in specific points. Now in this case, we're being asked the shear strain at point A. So the change in angle before it was an original rectangle. Now it's essentially going to be, let me go ahead, the strain at corner A is equal to the change in angle. So it's originally 90 degrees, take away theta A. This is going to be the shear strain for A. Now for the shear strain at B, we notice that this angle, theta B, B is actually going to be greater than 90 degrees. So the shear strain at B is equal to 90 degrees, which is the original shape, minus theta B. And we see this is going to be a negative number. So one thing um, that's important, um, whenever the change in angle, when the angle of a corner decreases, that's when shear strain is positive. However, when the angle of a specific corner increases, that's when the shear strain is going to be negative. So the rest of the things we're given, we have point A, point B, point C. We have the original dimensions of the square, which is 400 millimeters, the highest 300 millimeters. And we see a deformation here, five millimeters here, five millimeters here. Now. To be able to determine these angles, there's nothing more than trig, right? We could go ahead and solve for this angle. Let's call this angle beta. And then solve for this angle here. Let's call this alpha. And keep in mind, alpha is also over here. This is alpha as well. And we see that this portion of the angle is also beta. So we need to solve the angles for alpha, beta such that we're such that we're able to determine alpha theta A and theta B here. So we see alpha we could use tangent which is opposite over adjacent and the tangent inverse to find the angle alpha is tangent inverse 5 divided by 400 which gives us this angle. Now, similarly, for the angle beta, we have tangent inverse 5 divided by 300, which gives us 0 0.9548 degrees. Now, with this information, alpha and beta, we're actually able to determine theta A and theta B. Theta A is equal to 90 degrees, which was its original angle, but we subtract alpha and we subtract beta. So theta A gives us 88.3289 and now theta B is equal to 90. In this case, we add alpha and we also add beta because the angle actually increased, which gives us 91.6709 degrees. Now, finally, we could actually solve for the shear strain at point A and point B using these equations here. So the shear strain at A is positive 0 0.02916 radians and the shear strain at B is negative 0 0.02916 here. Keep in mind, always convert the degrees into radians because this is how we write the shear strain.